Hi, welcome to Contena webcast about running Docker containers in production with Contena really easily. My name is Jussi Nummelin and, and we're broadcasting from Contena headquarters in Helsinki today. Uh, today I'm gonna show you how Contena works and then also I'll, I'll, I'll have a live demo how to set up Contena environment and deploy an application on top of it. Uh, I'll have a few slides to start with to explain what, what Contena really is about and, and then after that I'm going to show the live demo. Hope you enjoy the, the, the screencast and, and let's hit the road. So Contena is, is a developer friendly container and microservices platform. And as we all know, containers are really in the hype, hype cycle in, in the IT industry at the moment and has been for the past year or so. Containers really promise to be the, the future of computing to really simplify the deployment and, and delivery of applications. With virtualization technologies, you always have to run hypervisors and, and some guest operating systems to isolate your applications from each other. With containers, you, you can actually remove the hypervisor and, and guest operating system layers and just deploy your applications using containers and run them with, with container engine. Mostly Docker nowadays, but, but there are some other choices also. So containerization really is, is a sandboxing technology to, to sandbox your applications on the operating system level. So it gives you, you technology that you can use to run multiple isolated applications in, in a single operating system host without running actually a, a hypervisor or guest operating systems. As I said, it, it's really hot, hot trend in the IT industry at the moment and it, it really seems to be the, the next step to optimize the computing resources past the, the virtual machine era. Containers really seem to take the, the promise of, of build and configure once, run anywhere to the real reality. There has been in the past quite a lot of different technologies with the same promises, but at least from my point of view, containers really, really are, are making that true. So it's really ideal for, for DevOps type of, of environments where you do deployments continuously because it, it really eases up the deployment setup. Containers also have really significant buy-in from, from different parts of the industry. So of course there are startups like, like Contena that, that bring containers into life, but there are also large vendors that are utilizing container technologies such as Amazon, Microsoft, Red Hat, all the big players are using and utilizing containers or, or providing container platforms. Contena is an open source project that, that uh, builds a, a container and, and microservice platform. Contena's main goal is to maximize the developer happiness. So whatever we do at Contena Inc, we try to make it super easy for the developers to use and utilize. Contena itself really works on any, any environment, any cloud provider, in your private data center, on your laptop. And as I'll show in the demo part, it's really easy to set up and, and really extremely simple to use for any developer. Um, some quick facts about Contena. Uh, it's an open source project on GitHub. There's been more than 800 people liking the project, giving stars, stars to it. And there has been more than half a million installations of our Docker-based components based on the, the metrics that we get from Docker Hub. Contena has been featured also in the, the Newstack publication. And if you don't, haven't heard about it, the, the Newstack is, is really sort of the publication for the, for the container topics. So it's really, really good to have Contena also mentioned there quite a few times. 
Uh, the Black Tag organization also selected Contena as, as Rookies of the Year 2015. So it gives really nice kind of thumbs up to, to Contena team that, that you guys are doing something really cool and, and we really appreciate it. Of course, as, as with, with any open source community or, or any, any open source project, there's a quite active community around Contena and there's been really positive feedback on, on different aspects of Contena and, and it seems that it, it's really something that people have been, have been needing and, and it really feels, feels to, to be welcomed in the industry. Let's look at uh, how, how Contena really works. So the, the most important concept in, in Contena is, is called a, a grid. And uh, a grid is, is basically a set of, of, of machines, either physical or virtual, which are combined into, into one logical unit we, we call a grid, kind of a cluster, so to say. The nodes can actually be located anywhere you can run the, the nodes in a grid in a single data center. You can run it across different availability zones in Amazon or cloud, for example. Or you can even run your nodes in, in different cloud providers. That's made actually possible by, by using an overlay networking technology. So Contena will always automatically create an overlay network in the grid. So Whenever you spin up your services, your containers on top of container platform, all the containers are connected to the overlay network and thus they can easily communicate with each other regardless of, of what node in the grid they are running or even in what availability zone or even in, in it doesn't matter if they are running on different cloud providers. The network communication for the containers themselves are, is, is really like a, a local subnet communication. Contena of course configures also service discovery based on DNS. So it's really easy for your application to find your MySQL database for example based on, on DNS name. We do have an etcd key value store available within the grid. So if your application needs more robust or, or something else for service discovery, we do have a key value store always available within the grid so that you can, your applications can use it if, if needed. The CD is also used internally in Contena, for example, to power the Contena's load balancing functionality. Of course, when, when talking about container platform, the platform has to offer the, the orchestration capabilities. That's, that's the case also with Contena. So Contena comes with a powerful orchestration component that takes care of distributing, running and monitoring all, all your services that are running in the grid. So the orchestration makes care, care that the load is, is balanced within the grid and the containers that are supposed to be running are actually running somewhere in the grid. You can run stateless or stateful applications. So if you run some state, stateful databases, for example, container orchestration makes care that, takes care that the data will be there even across the deployments of your application. So on top of these architectural layers, you can then deploy your own containerized workload, your application. With Contena, all the services are described in, in YAML file, and we always take the, the, the services is the unit that we deploy. So basically a Docker image file or image name describes a, a service. Of course, services can be scaled up so that you will have multiple instances of your service running, in, of course, in different containers. And then you can, of course, link together different services to create a more complex and elastic applications. 
how do we do all this on the on the node level? So the only thing that has to be set up on the node is content agent. And as content agent is actually packaged as a Docker container also, it's really easy to spin up anywhere because it means that the only requirement for the container itself is Docker itself. Of course, the, the container agent has to have some superpowers on the node because it has to be able to control the, the underlying Docker engine. So it has to be mounted with the, with the doc, local Docker socket and, and given some other privileges to be able to function properly. When the agent starts up, it then can automatically configure everything else it needs on the node. For example, the overlay network. So the user doesn't have to make any, any cumbersome network configurations on the node itself. The sort of brains of the system are actually running on, on a component called Contena Master. So the master is orchestrating the entire Contena system. It, it actually provides an, an REST API, which you can use to, to control your services and, and control the grid with Contena CLI tool, for example. We do have a web UI in the making, and as the master provides a REST API, it's really easy to make any third-party integration work with it. It's just a REST API. The Contena master can be installed in, in highly available setup if, if really needed. So you can run, run multiple instances of the master, just point them to, to the same database so that they, they really know that they are actually working on the same grid. The database behind the, the Contena master is, is MongoDB, so it's pretty easy to make that also as, as highly available with a, let's say, three node replica set. Contena really comes with, with all batteries included. So one thing we, we provide out of box is, is for example, a built-in image registry. There are many cases where you don't really want to use any public image registries such as Docker Hub, or you, you might have cases where you actually cannot use it because your environment is, is within some basement where there might not be even internet connectivity. So Contena provides a, a one single command to set up your private image registry within the grid. So it's always private and secure for your, your applications. For the overlay network, we provide also a VPN access point. When you have to do database maintenance or, or something else, operational tasks for your applications, you can then spin up with a one single CLI command, the VPN access point, and gain access to the, the overlay network. The overlay network is, is, of course, private for your grid only. So without the VPN access point, you don't have external access for the overlay network. Unless you specifically expose some service out of the network. Contena comes also with a built-in load balancer. It's based on HA proxy technology, so it's pretty well battle-tested and, and proven to, to work in in even hardest environments. Container load balancer is, is really fully automatic. So whenever you say that, that you want to have your application behind a load balancer, Contena takes care of, of configuring the load balancer for you and also makes sure that whenever you make changes in your applications, all those changes are reflected in the, in the load balancer configuration automatically. And the load balancer is, of course, configured in, in zero downtime manner. So whenever you, for example, scale, scale your application up, let's say you, you want to have now 10 instances instead of one, the content load balancer is always automatically updated to give traffic to the new instances of your application. Contena also collects statistics and logs for each and every container that's pinned up on top of Contena platform. 
So what it gives you as a developer, really easy, one single access point to see all your stats and logs for your applications and, and different application instances. The aim for Container is, is not to be any, any log analytics system. So if you want or need log analytics capabilities, you can then actually stream the logs out from the Container Master and then utilize some other, other systems like Splunk, for example, or Elk Stack to analyze your logs even, even further. And same goes for the statistics. Container has a, a kind of a, more like a snapshot of the statistics. So if you need longer term storage for your statistics, more analytics capabilities, some alerting or something, you can then stream those out from container platform using standard StatsD protocol to any, any other system. So if you have, for example, Grafana already running or Influx data-based system, you can easily import the statistics from container using StatsD protocol. Of course, all operations in Container Master has to be authenticated. So we do have a user management system in place. And whenever a user makes changes into some services or some other grid configuration, we collect those changes into, into audit trail log. So we can have a clear line of, of changes, who changed what and when. So it gives you really reliable and, and secure solution, even for enterprise deployments, where typically these things are, are mandatory to have. Content has also built-in secret management capabilities. It's called a, a Container Vault, where you can actually store your secrets, whether they are your database passwords, some API keys, SSL certificates, or, or whatnot. You can store them securely in, in Container Platform using Container Vault. Container Vault makes sure that the data is always encrypted at rest and only opened in the last second when we have to inject into the running containers. So it gives you a really nice tool to, to abstract your, your secrets out of your different configuration files. So pretty much Container has all the building blocks that you really need to run your microservices and containers successfully in, in production environments. Container really works in, in any infrastructure because I, as I said, the only real requirement is, is Docker engine itself. We do have a ready-made integration plugins for different cloud providers, for example, AWS, DigitalOcean, Azure, and, and a bunch of others, so that you can actually, with, with our CLI plugins, you can spin up the, the whole container environment in just a matter of minutes. Of course, you can run it in any other system. You just might have to do the deployment and configuration with, with some other tools. Like for example, with OpenStack, you could use heat templates or, or something else. Okay, as promised, I'll share a, a live demo, how to set up the whole container platform, starting from scratch, and then deploy some application on it. So what I'm gonna do in the demo, I'm gonna create the container master on DigitalOcean, using our CLI, ready-made CLI plugin. I'm gonna create a couple of nodes to form the grid itself. When the setup is ready, I'm gonna deploy a pretty simple web application just to show how, how really easy it is to, to define services and deploy them using container. Then I'm gonna scale the application so to see that it, it really scales up easily. So let's switch to the terminal mode for the demo. As said, I'm gonna use the ready-made plugins. So this one is called, of course, DigitalOcean. So I'm saying that, that okay, container, DigitalOcean, 
master create. It of course prompts me some name. So I'll give it a, a name that I can actually remember that, that what, what this master was used for so that I can actually delete it safely later on. Container 0 0.16 release came up with the OAuth 2 based authentication. For that we of course recommend to use the Container Cloud as the authentication provider, but you could actually use any, use any OAuth 2 compliant authentication provider such as GitHub for example. For the demo I'll, I'm going to use Container Cloud. The DigitalOcean then plugin then prompts me the region we're at in, in Europe at the moment in Helsinki, so I'm going to use the closest one in, in Amsterdam. It then prompts me the, the size of the master. So for the demo I'm not going to do anything special, so I'll just select the small one. And after that the Contena plugin, DigitalOcean plugin starts to interact with the DigitalOcean APIs, it creates the, the droplet and then configures, configures it properly so that it's, it's ready to work after it spins up. So the, the droplet it, it is actually created already and we are not now just waiting, to, waiting for the droplet to boot up and, and have all the container components ready for action. While waiting that, I'm going to show in the slides the setup that I'm going to do. So pretty simple and standard container setup. I have the CLI talking with the master and I have three nodes set up and in, the, in the grid that then of course connect to the master itself. We quite often for, for production type of deployments, we recommend to have, have typically three nodes in the, in the cluster to really be highly available. Spinning up the master takes few minutes because it has to, when, it, when, when the node boots up, it gets configured through the cloud init system and it then has to pull in all the all the needed components for the for the container master, the master itself, and then of course the, the MongoDB for the database. Should be ready any minute now. It's always unpredictable with, with uh, cloud providers that how fast they are to spin up the new comp computers. And as if, if you've been working with Docker Hub, you, you, you know that uh, there are days and, and, and hours where Docker Hub itself is, is acting quite slow. And as the container master component itself is, is actually also a, a Docker container, so it takes a while to pull it, pull it on the node. Okay. So as you can see in the logs, you, you, you can see that uh, all the authentication things are automatically configured and everything. So the master itself is, is really good to go and, and ready for action now. The CLI provisioning tools all, already creates me a, a grid called test. So I'll, I'll use that as in, in the demo for, for now. Of course, I don't have any nodes connected yet to the grid. So at this point, the grid is something really abstract. So what I'll do is I'll spin up a couple of nodes, act as the, as the workload. So again, I'm going to use the same, same region, of course. 
Amsterdam. And again, I'm not doing going to do any 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 Facebook killer application or anything, so I'll just select the small one because it's it's quite cheap. I'll actually tell the, the CLI tool to provision me three nodes automatically. So it's really easy to easy to spin up more than multiple nodes at once with the CLI tool. While the CLI tool is, is uh, provisioning the nodes, I'd like to share the application itself that I'm that I'm gonna use as the as the demo application. So I'll have a I, I ha already have a to do application existing. It's a Ruby based web app. It uses MongoDB as as the database. And to be really highly available, I'll put the three different MongoDB instances in a in, as a replica set, so that the data is always replicated across three different ins instances of, of the MongoDB. What I'll also do is is because I of course I don't want to expose my application directly to the internet. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a, a load balanced container load balancer in front of the application and automatically the load balancer gets configured with the with the application details and then is able to, to route traffic to the three different application instances. So pretty standard application setup where you when you, when you want to run things on, on highly available mode. Let's see if the provisioning is, is Completed, not yet, but but almost. We can see that the, the the droplets themselves are already created. The two first of them are already joined the the grid, so the master can see them already online. So we are just now waiting for the last one to boot up and and have all the container components in in place. Yes. So checking the the container. Node list, we can see that, that there are three randomly named nodes connected and, and we automatically put some labels in so that we can identify that okay where, where they are actually running and, and those sort of things. For the sample application, as I said, I, I have a, a Ruby based web app which has these uh, to-do lists, basically. The application itself is it's, uh, not important in, in this demo, so you could use any, any application with, the, with the, basically the same blueprint. Contena defines all the, all the services in, in YAML, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty similar to the Docker Compose YAML files. And it's actually made so that, that you can even import your Docker Compose definitions into the container YAML file. So you can then reuse all the configurations that you use locally for testing with Docker Compose and then just extend or, or override some of the options in the Docker Compose files to be able to deploy it on, on container platform. So I have a couple of services defined. Of course, the MongoDB itself based on the, the standard official Mongo image, create a two version. I specified that I want to have three instances running so that my data is really replicated across three different instances. And as we persist data in the database, we want to say to, to Contena that, that this service is a stateful service. So make sure that you preserve the data and the data volumes even between the different deployments of the application. The command is, is the command used to, to start the container. So of course, in this case, I have to say that it, it spins up or, or defines a replica, replica set called container and uses the small files option for the MongoDB. What makes it really easy in this case to configure the, the replica set is the hooks and especially the post start hooks that container has. So the post start hooks are something that are executed after 
the service has been started. So after the service has been started, we run a, a couple of different commands. First, we sleep a while just to wait that the, the MongoDB is really up and running to give it some time to, to really get, get going. The second command that we run as a, as a post start hook is, is to, to initiate the replica set. And then the two last ones are our commands to add the, to the instances number two and three into the same replica set with the, with the instance number one. So really easy to have this sort of a post start configuration things as, as defined in your service YAML we are this hook mechanism. The application itself, it's of course a, a Docker image from the public Docker hub. Uh, it's under, under my username, it's called the to-do example and I'm using the latest tag of the application. I said in the slides that I want to have three instances so let's change to, back to three instances. Uh, in the environment variables, I configured where the application is, is looking for Mongo. And here you can see in action the container DNS based service discovery. So really easy for the application to figure out and see where the, where the MongoDB is running. I'll come back to the couple of other environments in a while. And then just the, the command to command to spin up the application itself. I said it's a Ruby based application, so we use the, the Ruby bundle exec, start the Puma web server, and, and that's about it. The last service that I have defined in the, in the content YAML, I'll remove this one for a while, is the load balancer. So, even though the, the container load balancer is sort of a built-in functionality within container, it's still just another service defined in, in YAMLs. We use the container LB latest image, and we say that deploy this using a, a strategy called daemon. The daemon strategy is a, is a kind of special strategy in, in container, which makes the container master to deploy an instance of the load balancer for every single node that's part of the grid. So it gives you really easy mechanism to deploy these sort of things, common things like load balancers or, or some other type of agents, for example, metrics or, or something else, to be always available on every single node in the, in the grid. And then as I, as, as I want to, of course, expose some service out of, out of my, my grid, I use the typical port definition to expose the standard HTTP ports out of the out of the, low, the, the grid. Uh, in the application, I'm linking it to a couple of other services. I'm linking it to the MongoDB, of course, and then I'm linking it to the load balancer itself. And the load balancer link triggers the extra love and care on container platform to automatically configure the load balancer for this application. The load balancer configuration can be controlled with the container LB, prefixed environment variables. There's quite a few of them which you can find in, in container documentation. But in this case, I, I just have a couple of simple instructions to, to have a virtual host mapping to this specific application and then internally within the overlay network, use port 9292 to connect to the actual application instances. So let's deploy the application itself, or the whole stack of, of services. Deploying all these services with Contena is one single command called Contena app deploy. So the CLI tool now parses the YAML definition, creates all these services in the master, and then deploys the, or instructs the master to make the actual deployments onto the nodes. The first deployment takes a bit longer than, than usual, 
other deployments because we don't we, we just provisioned the nodes so they don't have any MongoDB Docker images or anything else available in the nodes. So they have to pull in all the all the layers of the images from Docker Hub. While waiting for that, uh, I want to share a couple of interesting things from the from the container YAML definition. Uh, we do have some flags to control the, the deployment process of, of container services. So one example is, is this wait for port option. So what it tells the container master is that uh, container master will basically deploy only one instance at a time for this application and it will wait for the 9292 port to be open before going to or, or starting to deploy the next instance. So what it ensures you is, is that your application instance is actually running or at least listening to, to some port before container goes on to, to deploy the, the other instances of the service. What we could do also is to define a option called min health, which basically tells that, that okay, during any given deployment, I want 80% of my service instances to be up and running. So you can be sure that container doesn't bring all your service instances down when it, when it does a, a deployment. We do have a couple of other options also. You can find the documentation for those in, in container.io slash docs. Okay, the application is, is almost deployed. So it's all already deployed the MongoDB. So the Mongo, all, the, all the MongoDB instances are, are up and running. It's executed all the hooks, so the MongoDB replica set is, is ready to go. It's already deployed the load balancer and as I've instructed with the daemon strategy it's deployed on, on all three nodes. It's now deploying the, the application and, and should finish every second, any second now. As this is a, a only a kind of a demo application that I, I, I use in the de different demos, I haven't optimized the, the Docker image size that much, so it takes a while to pull pull all the layers from from Docker Hub for each of the nodes. But then, of course, when when deploying things, the the second time or third time, the the Deployment is, is much faster, of course, because the, the nodes already have most of the, the Docker image layers already locally stored. Okay, so the application is done. Deployment is done. So how can we actually access it now? Let's uh, take a look on, on some of the details of the, of the load balancer, because we we didn't expose any, serve, any, any ports from the application itself, so the only way to access the application is through the load balancer. So you can issue a command called content app show, load balancer in this case, to see the details that, that on which nodes the load balancer is deployed, and the, the command outputs you the public IP, for example, for the, for the nodes. So let's grab that and go to a browser and hit that IP address. In this case, we of course get 503 error because we configured, set in the configuration that the application is, is behind a, a host name. So we have to fake that somehow now. Uh, for that, I'm using a tool called gas mask in, in my Mac. You could of course fiddle with your local slash etc slash hosts file of course. 
but I prefer to use it more controlled way. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll sort of locally fake that, that the to do app that content.io points to actually this IP address. That's done. So let's hit it with the host name and voila, we do have a application up and running. And we can do fancy things with our to-do applications. You of course have to try container. And what you have to do also always is to have fun. I think we can cross the try container out. We've already deployed it. Okay, let's scale our application a bit. It just got viral in the in the social media, so there's tons of and millions of people of, of hitting it. So we have to scale up our capabilities to serve. Let's say five instances. Oh. As I've defined the, the instance count already in my YAML file, the CLI tool doesn't allow me to, to bypass it. So I have to change the YAML, YAML definition, just change, change the instance numbers, and then deploy the application again. So now Contena master kind of compares the existing state of the application with the sort of new instructions that it just got from the CLI tool and makes the necessary changes for the services. In this case, we didn't actually change any parameters or any configuration of the service itself. So it just pins up a couple of new instances of, of my service. And when we refresh the page, we can see in the bottom part of the page, there's this uh, served by statement that, that which instance actually of the application container did serve the data. So you can see that it's actually doing a round robin, round robin balancing for the application. And what I could do is, is I could I can check the logs of my application in one single command. So you can see that container has collected all the logs of, of the different instances and can be viewed really simply with the CLI. So for, the, for me as a developer, it's really, really great to have one single place to access all my, all my logs from my service. So, as you saw, Contena is really easy to set up, really easy to use. And the aim for Contena is really to become the number one container and microservice platform for developers like you. To stay up to date with Contena, you can find us in, in different social media, you can find us in Twitter. We do have a quite active Slack channel. So if you want to have discussion with, with other container users and, and container developers, pop into our Slack and, and ask questions, give comments. Contena is fully open source. So find it on GitHub, on, on container slash contena repo. We do have uh, quite a few different meetup groups across the world. So find your local meetup group join that and, and get more information on, on Contena through that. And of course, through Contena website, you can find all the documentation and a bunch of other information. So, hope you enjoyed the webcast and learned how to do new tricks with, with containers. You saw that it, it's really easy to set up Contena deploy your application on top of container. So try it out, give it a spin, let us know how, how it works for you. That's all for now. Thank you for joining the, the online meetup. Hope to see you soon in the, in the upcoming meetups in, in few 
weeks. Bye.